Hare Krishna. So here's our second part, uh, talking uh, about the divine and demoniac natures. Uh, Krishna was speaking about the qualities. We began about what are the actual qualities of those who are not interested in uh, spiritual emancipation and whose conduct leads to bondage. This was the definition of the demoniac. And now Krishna is giving us more ways to be able to identify because it's important for us as well because unfortunately we are raised in a culture where we will see and it doesn't matter where we are whether it's India uh, or whether it's uh, America or in Europe or anywhere else where the values that are being espoused here excuse me the values uh, that we learn uh, are the values that are being identified here in the Bhagavad Gita as being the values of demoniac people. Just listen to this. They say that this world is unreal and with no foundation, no God in control. They say it's produced of sex desire and has no cause other than lust. In other words, that unreal, uh, meaning that you live once and that's it. Uh, so you may as well enjoy yourself while you're at it. And there's no God in control. We're not accountable to anybody else. Well, you may have your faith. That's all right. Uh, but uh, actually what we teach and what they teach in school uh, is ultimately that there is no God in control because uh, Darwinism uh, and so on. Uh, means that there is no God in control, even though they may talk about different types of faith uh, and uh, there may be sort of a faith hour once a week. Uh, they say it's produced of sex desire and has no other cause other than lust, which means lust in the sense that we're just here to enjoy ourselves. And happiness, success is measured in how you satisfy your desires. This is what the world is all about, and it has no other purpose. And then, what happens when you think like that? Following such conclusions, the demoniac, who are lost to themselves and who have no intelligence, engage in unbeneficial, horrible works meant to destroy the world. Now, when I first read this 50 years ago, I didn't quite connect with. What are they doing to destroy the world? Is this about atom bombs and we're blowing up the world? But in the world that we live in today, where our environment has already been so badly damaged, uh, and you could say that it's actually destroying the world. Uh, so this is what Krishna is speaking about. Following such conclusions, they're lost to themselves. In other words, well, I'm just so self-obsessed. People are so, humanity is so obsessed with itself uh, that it thinks that it has all the answers to everything, where actually it has no solutions for anything. I have no intelligence. Sure, we build rockets to the moon and uh, even beyond, and uh, we have these uh, different gadgets. Uh, that we have. But if you remember, Krishna was speaking about knowledge in a different way. He didn't define knowledge with technology. These are considered these sort of arts. Uh, you have them, you don't have them. But real knowledge means you know that you're not this body, the difference between the body and the soul. You know what the purpose of life is. And we've already spoken a lot about this. Engage in unbeneficial, horrible works meant to destroy the world. Industry, pollution, raping the uh, Amazon rainforest, one after the other after the other, horrible works, just horrible works. Uh, and the end result is meant to destroy the world. It destroys the world. You may not want to destroy the world, but that's what's happening. And Kamam Ashrita Dushpuram Dambamana Madanvita, taking shelter of insatiable lust and absorbed in the conceit of pride and false prestige, 
the demoniac, thus illusioned, are always sworn to unclean work attracted by the impermanent, taking shelter of lust. In other words, as I mentioned before, lust means we live once, enjoy it while you can. It's all about enjoyment, enjoyment, enjoyment and absorbed in the conceit of pride and false prestige. We are everything. We are the apex of civilization. We are the apex of evolution. Humanity right now is achieving things they've never achieved before, absorbed in the, although I don't understand Bhagavad Gita, although I have no knowledge that compares to this, uh, but still, I think I'm so smart. Uh, false pride and false prestige. And we're, this is the illusion. We're living in this illusion that we're actually so smart when it's so obvious that we're so ignorant, we can't even live in a way that we maintain our own planet. We're like children. Uh, they're just so, when in, in their play, uh, they're destroying everything around them. Thus illusion, always sworn to unclean work, literally speaking, and attracted by the impermanent. Uh, you may vote this way, you may vote that way. Uh, you may uh, like uh, this type of thing, you may like that type of thing, but everything you're talking about is about the impermanent. Uh, we're just completely distracted by the impermanent. The car that I drive, the airplane that I fly, the clothes that I wear, the latest fashion, the latest trend, following the trend of the trendsetters. It's all about the impermanent. Nothing is about the permanent. And what is the psychology and mentality of such a person? They believe that to gratify the senses, satisfy my ears, eyes, nose, tongue, genitals, and so on, is the prime necessity of human civilization. Thus, until the end of life, their anxiety is immeasurable. And with that mindset, people are constantly living in anxiety. They need psychiatrists, they need all kinds of tranquilizers, uh, medication, uh, and so on. But they're constantly in anxiety because their whole life is about propping up something uh, that's artificial. Thus, until uh, the end of life, their anxiety is immeasurable, bound by a network of hundreds of thousands of desires and absorbed in lust and anger. They secure money by illegal means for sense gratification. Lust, I want it, and when I don't have it, then anger. And in order to facilitate my enjoyment, then who is completely honest. Secure money by illegal means for sense gratification. Uh, and the person has a certain psychology, a certain type of thinking, how he poses himself to the world, which we will read about in the third session of the divine and demoniac natures. Mm -hmm.